Hey guys, how you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a fabulous day. And here at Autodidactic, we look into alternative history because his story is not our story. Uh, as we know, they tell us history is written by the winners. Uh, but there is also another version. Maybe history is actually being written by the losers. Have you ever considered that? And today I wanted to have a look at an abandoned building. It's actually the City Methodist Church in Gary, Indiana. And this thing is uh, quite ridiculous. So let's go have a look. Okay, so the City Methodist Church in Gary, Indiana, also known as the United Methodist Church, is now a disused church, once the largest Methodist church in the Midwest. It ceased as a place of worship in 1975 after a relatively brief life of just over 50 years. Brief history is... A Methodist church had been present in Gary since 1906, also the year of the city's founding. In 1916, Dr. William Grant Seaman became its pastor. A man of dynamic energy, Seaman envisaged a much larger church to serve the town, wanting to bring a prominent religious presence into what was then a somewhat insalubrious neighbourhood with numerous brothels and drinking establishments. So Seaman secured backing of the U.S. Steel, uh, the chief employer in the city, and the company donated the site on which the church was to be built and agreed to donate almost half the cost. The construction began in 1925, took just 21 months, so less than two years, and it cost $800,000 back in 1916. And this is what they built. Now, it says that the population was around 100,000. So the City Methodist Church, here's a few pics for you. So this is it. And as you can see, it's just, um, it's huge. It's mega. This building next to it is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's a 10-story building next to it. And this thing looks like it's at least the same height. Now abandoned, of course, and in disrepair. And we can, you know, again... Just look at this old world architecture we see everywhere, you know, these sort of cantilevered windows, window box things we see, you know, arched windows, pyramids, the whole thing, some symmetry inside. We've got these huge, these look to be brick, uh, brick columns, and uh, yeah, it looks to be red brick. This is it. Uh, obviously in a state of disrepair, completely just, and this is still in the middle of a town and it's just been left. And it, like I said, it cost them $800,000 to build this, they're saying. Some of the glass still in there, the roof's just collapsed in. And yeah, they just put a fence around it and just leave it there. And this is, of course, while, you know, families are living on the streets and children are homeless and this is owned by the church and they just let it fall apart you know and it's an interesting question why does this happen so often you know why do we have this phenomena called abandoned buildings because the thing is if these buildings were built uh you know with a practical purpose in mind and built with uh you know the the materials and the skills and the labor that they had, you know, if that was all included and put into these buildings, then the buildings would be practical and they wouldn't be closed down. The only reason they get abandoned is these are massive old world buildings and they can't, no one can afford to keep up the upkeep because they don't, they didn't build them and they're too big. And that's why we get these massive, you know, nine story cathedrals 
in a town, I think Gary, Indiana, at the moment has like 20,000 people. And they're saying back in the day it had 100,000. Uh, but it was the biggest church in the Midwest. So it's, you know, many, many questions, isn't there? Because just look at this place. I mean, and look at it now. It's just completely just left. And this is uh, from 1975. So this is, I guess, you know, we're talking almost 50 years now, but uh, looking very much just like a building that we're told is like an ancient, you know, Roman building. It you know, looks exactly the same. You know, knock the roof off a bit and we've got the columns standing there. And of course, we can see these these are the stacked columns. They seem to be different types of columns. But just way above, really, way above anything that they could build back in 1926 in this tiny little town, which was a steel mill town. So everyone there was steel workers. This, this isn't steel. Here's another picture of it back in the day, but this is back in the 20s, uh, soon after they say it was built. And of course, already looking extremely aged and very castle-like. Uh, and it was also known as Seaman City Church because uh, the man who got it built was the seaman, the pastor seaman. So this is a, <laughs> I don't know, a bit of a funny little write-up, this one. And you find this a lot with all these names. It's like they're making jokes, you know, with all the words that they use and the names that they give these people. I'll just read this. Gary's first Methodist church was established in 1906. In October of 1916, Dr. William Grant Seaman became pastor. Seaman relished his role in the growing congregation, but he had bigger dreams. He wanted to build a new church to serve the social, cultural and spiritual needs of the town's citizens. Seaman wanted to offer a religious oasis in the midst of a neighbourhood dotted with saloons and brothels at the time. Mr. Seaman. His vision and the financial assistance of the U.S. Steel Corporation resulted in the erection of the new city church at the 6th Avenue, Washington Street. So the pastor, Mr. Seaman, built his big erection in amongst all the brothels. I mean, <laughs> this is just written to be stupid. I mean, seriously, come on. That's, that's just ridiculous. Uh, we have a few pics down here. This, I guess, this is Mr. Seaman. Uh, a few people sitting out. Uh, old world buildings in the background. A few bricks around. And here we even have, oh, some fresh mortar. Just to prove that they've laid some bricks here. Uh, so I think this is actually the um, laying of the first stone. And we get this picture as well. And this is where they're saying the church is being built in Gary, Indiana. And so this is another picture uh, from back in the day that we saw. And I'm actually just trying to work out because this doesn't, I mean, it could be, but it doesn't look like it's the same area. Just looking at all these buildings that go around there. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. And I mean, that building too, less than two years they got that built. Let's keep that in mind. Okay, so here we are at uh, in Gary, Indiana, and this here is the City Methodist Church. And you can see how big it is. This is, It goes back to here. So this whole thing is the church. And again, have a look at this photo. Oh, we can see, you know, is this space here even big enough for that church? It doesn't look like it. But see all these old world buildings down here, like terrace houses, two stories, and this building at the back. Uh, obviously, they, they may have been demolished, but as you'll see, if I go down here, uh, this is our church. And up here on this side, we have, this is actually an old world building up here. So this is one side, and I mean, just look at this, you know, architecture around the windows, mud flooded buildings. You can see they've actually, this was a doorway. They've, see that arch that they've filled in, turn it into two windows. 
So that's a mud flutter. That's an old building, old world. And I mean, you can just tell red brick, you know, nice bit of a facade on the front. Uh, that's not in the picture here, unless it, you know, it could be over here, I guess. Uh, but then if we have a look at the other side, we just get this sort of new 70s construction stuff. So that's not the terrace housing either. And at the back, there's just some new things. So, I mean, this may have been knocked down, but it just doesn't look like the same place. Now, this is the church. This thing. I mean, it looks like the whole roof's just completely caved in. Steps going up. Old world. It's been, uh, you know, resurfaced. We saw before it was red brick inside. Not sure what's happening with these windows here. Is that glass? Oh, okay, they've just filled them in with glass panels. They probably used to be nice stained glass back in the day. And look at this work. All the glass gone. Plants growing over it, just left to decay. And just so you can see how big this place is. This here is the front bit of the church. Massive, big... Uh, tower here and then it just keeps going back this is all the church nice big archway here you know cantilever windows not sure what that is uh, and it keeps going here <laughs> keeps going down and this was built you know back in the 1920s they're saying for a population of a hundred thousand and when it actually says that the population, because it was a steel mill town, like they're saying Gary was created uh, as a steel steel mill town, so most of the population wasn't native. They were all from different cultures. So it's not like everyone there was even a Methodist. This was a Methodist church. So it's just, it's a bit of a ridiculous story. I mean, and how this uh, Mr. Seaman came up with $400,000 back in the day I don't know another building here red brick now that could be an old world building that's being just refacaded re and refaced off re-roofed as they do so often and they turn them into industrial buildings because you can see the look of the wall there and the look of the wall here they look the same looks like there was something in between there obviously all red brick and you can see so that's the church red brick and they, re they reface them. So that's the church in Gary. And this is Gary, Indiana. And I just did find it a, a kind of an interesting little spot. Just because man-made canals, man-made shorelines. Canals going through here. Of course, we've got this shape that I keep pointing out. These uh, bendy shapes they have in, in these canals. You know, I mean, look at that bit there. I, I, I don't know if this is called a canal, if it's man-made or if it's called a river, but it's definitely man-made. Uh, and up here again, we get these these shapes. And what, what do we call them? Are they like chicanes? But you get them in all the old world cities. And look, uh, is that... Yeah, that's canals as well. So see how... Look at that. Three like that. I mean, come on. Completely man-made, and this is obviously near Chicago. And this again, just got all the, you know, all the hallmarks of those old world city canals that we see everywhere. So I think there's a lot more going on around Gary, Indiana, than we're shown. And of course, uh, what's happening under the water here. You know, because a lot of these places... Uh, there's a lot of sunken stuff. And of course, on this, you know, who knows what this was. And they've just turned it into dock lands by the looks of it. A bit of mining. Big mining operation. Probably mining out all the sandstone that was the star fort. Because, <laughs> I mean, just look at the point on that. You know, so a lot of these places, that they're star cities. They've just been completely bowled over. And, yeah, they just built on top of them. And of course, when we look into, you know, how it got into its current state of disrepair, you know, we find the same old story. These parasites 
they don't have any creativity. They don't have a right side of their brain. So they, they just have the same old storybook. So take a wild guess at what happened to this place. Even in abandonment, this building is beautiful and a source of fascination for many. It has been photographed, explored and documented by countless people. Uh, it has also been used as a movie set for films like Nightmare on Elm Street. Because of course, say, you know, it's a church. And then what happens? Uh, the church was badly damaged by a fire in 1997. Burn it. That's right, let it burn. So same old story. Uh, you know, arson. Get it in there, burn it down. As we can see, all red brick. Beautiful old building, just... They tried to, you know, renovate it. They put their little, <laughs> their little date on it. Just so that we know, because obviously this is original, right? You know, it's not really red brick. No, this is original. Ah, uh, so yeah, just to finish off, I've got a bit of uh, footage I thought we'd have a quick look at. Ah, uh, so here we go. Here's a bit of footage and I will leave the link for this video and the channel below. This is someone who goes exploring abandoned buildings. And as you can see, there's just rotting wood everywhere, but with these beautiful old world windows. And I mean, just look at it, red brick. And this, it's got rooms set up in it with fireplaces. This looks like some kind of uh, mini sort of so you can see here a look at that roof uh, so this is it abandoned city methodist church that's the name of the video like i said i'll leave the link but look at this ceiling here just ridiculous all the facades falling off showing the brick even got the old light fittings in there And there are bedrooms, oh my God, see, just look at this place. Built in 1926. Look at that. Just look at the work here. That is just incredible. Like I said, just all red brick, as we see everywhere. Ah, of course, lower levels. Got to have the lower levels. Okay, we've got, you know, again, this is brick and these curved roofs, which again, we see everywhere. And this place has just been trashed. But you can see how big it was. This was not just a church. This was a big, big building with, with lots and lots and lots of rooms. Lower levels. You know, there was like, what, nine stories above the ground levels and it had lower levels too. And this is it. This is a side view. So, you know, I'd like to hear the story of where all the brick came from, where all the masons came from, where all the people who made these, are these called architraves, you know, all these mouldings for the windows, who made the stained glass, uh, you know, and the lead for the stained glass, where did that come from? Where did the concrete footings come from? Where did the mortar come from? Where did the, well, obviously they had the steel, because it's a steel town, but, you know, none of these questions are answered. Just, they just give you the name of, of a pastor. Yeah, the pastor built it. No, he didn't. Mr. Seaman did not erect it. And you can see they've totally squared off everything inside. They like to do this. is all false walls they've put in. And again, look at the window. It's same that, you know, you'd see that in Europe, everywhere, South America. Africa, it's all the same, and it's all red brick. I mean, just imagine how many bricks are in this, just in this one building. Look at that. Oh my 
God, see how much? Man, that's like someone's really gone in and tried to destroy this place. I mean, just look, it's just crumbling, all the bricks crumbling off. This has been smashed. I mean, I guess that's what fire does. That's, you know, they like to put the fire in there. And then I guess, you know, then they can say, oh, well, now it's not structurally sound. Now we have to knock it over. Because they don't like these old world buildings, these parasites. Now, this is all probably, you know, new the new roofing. They'd have to re-roof all these places because when most of them are found, because they're so old, the roofs have collapsed in. Some old world brick for you. I mean, just completely smashed. And a lot of these walls are new. This looks like it's a new sort of internal wall because they look quite hollow bricks. But just... I mean, just the scope of this place. Building 21 months, guys. 21 months. I mean, look at it. There's the tower. Roof completely destroyed. But, you know, the actual structure is still looking pretty good, really, isn't it? Because God knows how old this place really is. So yeah, this is an exploring channel. Like I said, I'll leave the link. Be sure to check them out because a lot of these exploring channels, you know, they get into some great places and give you some really good views of all these abandoned buildings. There's a nice old fireplace. And here we go. This is one of the main rooms, one of the main windows. Roof gone. And just ginormous again, just huge. Built for people bigger than us. And it's the same thing. It's just every window, every surface just done perfectly with such artistry and precision and then people come along and try and say yeah no we did that we did that i built that because i'm the pastor of a church just believe me okay so there's a few other buildings in gary indiana that are abandoned as well and I did not know that Gary, Indiana is Michael Jackson's boyhood home, or was. Uh, and also, obviously, a big steel, uh, steel factory town. And so it has lots of abandoned buildings. And guess what? They all look like old world buildings. We've got this one. Red brick. Stairs going up. Uh, and just the shape, the way that it's built, you know, I mean, this is not how they build, you know, the, the whole today's society, but it's just all squares. It's not this intricate sort of shapes and that. And just left to right. This, it's an old government building. This one is the Union Station in Gary, Indiana. And again, Look at this place, just completely old world. Got all our nice Phoenician stuff up the top here and our portal. With the plants coming through, of course. Uh, and this looks like it's been closed in. That was probably one big arch. And yeah, big old abandoned train station. Just sitting next to this train track. I mean... And while, they, while there's abandoned buildings like this, they're going around building new buildings. Not necessarily in Gary, but there's another picture of the old train station. Look at it. So, there's a few different places. This is an abandoned school. 
And again, it's all looking very old world, isn't it? See uh, the front of this? Got the balls here, We've got these old shapes that we see everywhere. Uh, Phoenician facading. <laughs> Arches, pillars, balustrades, balls, a whole lot. And of course these windows are kind of, look like they're going a bit low into the ground. It's built up on a hill like they all are. Uh, of course, Wooden Nichols has shown a lot of buildings like this in schools that are all up on mounds. And here, of course, is the church. And here's another one, an apartment building. The Ambassador. So this is like an old world town because, again, red brick. Oh my God, that really is crumbling. I'd uh, see all this cement. I don't know. That looks that could be newer. But when we get down here, you know, all this facading and stuff, and you can see it's a facade. It's all fallen off. You know, the old world kind of metal railing. So lots and lots of old world pointers here. And look at that. So the facade's fallen off, and you can see the old red brick there. Huge doorways. As always, so I mean that as well. I'm not sure what, what's going on with this cement. I mean, but that may have been part of how they used to construct, or maybe the top is retrofitted. Who knows? But because that brick there was like really, really, really destroyed, wasn't it? And of course, the abandoned preschool for gifted young children. Just an old world house, really been left to rot roofs fallen in but again these 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 you know it's like we see everywhere these are just buildings that have been found just found and renovated reclaimed rebranded and sold to us as uh, as a new construction so there we go, guys. Uh, a bit about Gary, Indiana, and especially this huge Methodist church built in 21 months back in 1916, was it? 26. Uh, yeah, no story about where any of the materials came from apart from the steel. Uh, the only name we get is a pastor. And I doubt he was out there laying the bricks by himself because that is one huge construction. And just used for 50 years and then left uh, derelict. And of course, the firebug came and got it as well. So there we go. A bit of a look. Hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Thanks for spending some time with me. And I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.